Hi, I'm Elizabeth with Elizabeth Road Studio. I'm a glass and resin artist in South Central Kentucky, and I'm so happy to be here today. I'm honored to be here, and I can't wait to show you a fun project using an old recipe, some napkins, some glass, and some resin. I'm a glass and resin artist, which means I usually use reclaimed wood, reclaimed glass, and then resin to hold it all together. I'll kind of give you an idea of the kind of stuff that I do. Um, this is one piece that I've done that's not on reclaimed wood. I did this on an old picture frame, but that's how resin works over glass. It kind of holds everything together and makes everything super shiny. So I'm gonna give you a project idea. Let's get started, okay? Let me pull myself up here on the screen. There we go. Okay, my husband and I take apart pallets, wood pallets, and we cut them apart and kind of rough up the edges a little bit and sand them just a little bit, and you end up with some really unique wood. I went ahead and took this little five by seven wood piece and painted one side of it white. You can see on my hands. <laughs> I've been busy this morning. So I painted one side of it white and um, I just kind of gave it a rough coat. I didn't want to cover it completely. You can cover your board as fully as you'd like. You can even do several coats if you'd like, but I kind of like the roughness of this one, like it is. Okay, so I am going to take one of my grandmother's recipes. Now I have a couple of my grandmother's recipe books. She passed away a few years ago and uh, we always had holiday uh, traditions of certain things. So this is the holiday tradition that she started with uh, little oyster crackers and my grandfather loved them and she always had them out on the holidays. So I'm going to make this to give to my niece who's getting married. Um, I think it would be a great addition to her first home. So I went ahead and took the recipe. I sized it the way I wanted to on my phone and I flipped it in my phone app. Um, I flipped the image and then printed it. I did increase the brightness a little bit. The background was kind of a light blue, so I wanted to take that out. So I wanted just the image and it can be in color or it can be in black and white like this one is. It doesn't really matter. I'm gonna trim off the excess that I don't need. I already cut off another recipe that was down here at the bottom. I went ahead and cut that a minute ago. And I just wanna figure out where I wanna center it on my piece. I may want it to go up here. I'm gonna plan it out, okay? So I may want it to go up here. I may want it down here. I might want it on this other side. This is what I have to work with. I found these napkins in my stash. These are Christmas napkins, obviously. This is a recipe she always had out at Christmas. So I wanna make this as like, you know, for Christmas, obviously. <laughs> and I think I'm going to put Santa down here. I'm gonna cut the words out, but I wanna keep Santa on here. I think he's a cute little addition to this. And then possibly some holly. So I need to decide if I want um, how I want to space this, maybe like that, and then have some holly up here in the corner. Let me cut out this Santa and see what he looks like. Now I'll trim him up a little bit more, fussy cut around the edge, a little bit more once I know where I'm going to put him. And I'll trim this off the bottom too. If you've never decoupaged with napkins, you need to go check out my friend, Miss Tracy. She does a great, great project. She does great projects decoupaging with napkins. It's so fun. Okay, so I wanna make sure that I don't get the words on here. Maybe that, you know, cover up the words with his hand here. Although, they probably show through. Can't be certain though. And maybe Holly up here. I could do it this way. No, I think I like it over here. Okay, so I'm going to do it that way. I think I'll put some Holly maybe here and maybe some here and here. So this is what I'm gonna use for my Holly. I'm not gonna use the poinsettia. Um, I'm just gonna cut this Holly out here. Once again, I'm not gonna trim real close just yet. May need to use that leaf right there. Let's see, if I had holly up here. 
The good thing about decoupaging with napkins is you get four designs of your napkin, you know? So you get four different sections and I could cut these leaves apart. I could arrange them in a different way if I wanted to. Um, let's see. So I could have some down here, some here, maybe even a leaf up here to kind of frame out this little thing. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my um, reverse image of this uh, recipe here. And I'm just gonna kind of mark where it's going with a pencil, just so that I remember where it's supposed to go. That will be covered up with my decoupage. So just wanna mark on there kind of where I'm gonna put it. And I wanna use some Mod Podge Matte. So you wanna make sure it's the yellow bottle. Mod Podge Matte and a sponge brush. And I'm going to transfer this image onto the wood. Now, you could just decoupage the paper down, that would be just fine. But this is gonna give it a look as if it has been printed on here, okay? So, let me finish putting down a nice, even coat, not too thick. Make sure I get it all covered because anywhere it skips, if I don't have enough um, matte medium on there, if it skips, it will not transfer. And then double check that you've got it in reverse. That's very important. And then I'm gonna lay my recipe down on here where I want it to go. Just kind of press it down with your fingers. And I'm gonna take um, the back of a paintbrush that's probably not the best one to use. <laughs> Take the back of a paintbrush and I'm just gonna kind of burnish it. If you had like a credit card or a scraper of some sort, that would work too. I'm just gonna use what I have right here next to me. And burnish that down and make sure every little bit is stuck. Now, if your material you're using, like say you just went and bought a little five by seven board, um, if it's real bumpy or if it has a whole lot of texture, you're gonna need to really, really make sure you do this. This one's pretty smooth, honestly, so um, it's gonna be just fine. Okay, here's the hard part. We're gonna let this dry overnight, okay? So set it aside and let it dry overnight and then I'll be right back to show you what we're gonna do next. Okay, I'm back. So I have my board and I've let it dry. I've already done a little bit of peeking to make sure it worked. <laughs> I took some, I'm taking some wet paper towels and I'm just gonna kinda lay them on top of here. Um, the idea is that the Mod Podge helps the ink to transfer onto the board and you can use a laser or inkjet, it doesn't matter. Um, helps it to transfer onto the board, and then when you peel away the paper, it leaves the ink behind. Can you see that? Can you see how that's working? Now what you're seeing right there is just the ink coming through, but if you press this down with paper, I mean with a wet paper towel, and then you can just peel away the layer of paper that's on top, and you'll be able to see the ink stays onto the board. There are lots of different ways you can transfer images. This is just one way. So if you've tried this before and you can't get it to work, um, usually if people have trouble with that, it's because they didn't let it set overnight or they rubbed too much with their finger to get the paper off. Um, so if you have trouble with this, there's so many other ways you can do it. And then of course you can always just um, use uh, the Mod Podge and decoupage, just like we're gonna do with our paper towel, I mean with our napkins. So 
don't worry if um, this isn't your thing. And if you were to do it that way, just decoupage it on here, then you would want to make sure and um, definitely print it out going the direction, uh, you know, the correct way. Don't print it in reverse in that case. I mean, that's kind of obvious, but <laughs> sometimes we forget obvious things, so I'll make sure and make that clear. Okay. Dusting this off here. Most of that paper off. And we've got our image transferred. Okay, clean up my work area here just a little bit before I make it messy again. That's usually how it works. So now I've got to figure out where I want to, you just want to make sure you get all that dust off because it'll get stuck under the resin and of course it'll be there forever then. You don't want little balled up pieces of paper underneath there. Um, when it's dry, I'll be able to take a brush, a dry brush and brush it off. Okay, so now I want to figure out where I want my Santa to be. So in order to decoupage with napkins, you need to separate the plies. It's a whole lot easier to separate the plies of the napkin um, where it's not pressed together. Now, if you're gonna use the whole thing, uh, you're gonna have to start from a corner that's pressed together. But if you're gonna use just part of it, you cut it and then just like I've done, and then you can separate it a little bit easier. Um, Miss Tracy, who taught me how to do this, says the best way to do it is to take your spit and tap, tap, tap your fingers together until it gets just a little bit sticky. And then you can start uh, grab a corner and pull and it separates right away. Now I know that there is more than one layer on this. There were three plies on this napkin. It usually tells you on the package, but I don't have the package to any of these. But I can tell that there's still another layer on there. So you wanna get it down to the very bottom layer, or the very top layer, I guess you could say. Tap, tap, tap. Watch me not be able to do this because I'm on camera. <laughs> Let's see. There we go. You don't want to tear up your design. And that's part of why I left a little bit of an edge there and didn't fussy cut right away. Now I know I'm down to my final layer. That one didn't want to come off. Okay, now I've got my final Santa Claus layer. Let me get some little scissors so I can trim kind of tight around the edge. Really don't want that green showing up. Now this background is light enough that it's just gonna kind of melt into the background that I have here. So I don't have to worry about getting rid of all of that background. You might be able to see it a little bit, but it's not gonna be something that stands out that much. I love his little mitten. I inherited, we had, see on this side of my family, there are eight cousins, and I inherited my grandfather's velvet Santa hat that he always wore to pass out presents. So I am so honored to have that Santa hat. <laughs> and it always reminds me of him. I don't know how I ended up with that. I'm surprised one of the older cousins didn't fight me for it. Okay. He even has a little holly detail on his hat, so I think that'll be pretty sweet. Okay, I know this word right here just says cool and store in tin, not plastic, and I think that'll probably show through. So I'm not gonna worry too much about his little hand being in the way there. Could scoot him off to the side, but I'd rather have the whole thing on there. So I'm gonna take more of my Matte Mod Podge and a sponge brush and make a bed for Santa to lay on. <laughs> I'm just gonna cover this with the Mod Podge, a thin coat, and lay down my tissue paper. Now it's tissue paper. I wanna pat, pat, pat 
till it's stuck. Now, if you didn't get all the plies off of there, it will start to like bubble up and it won't push down flat. It'll wrinkle a whole lot. And you'll know immediately what you've done because trust me, I've done it before. <laughs> done it more than once. Okay, so now I have these guys. I'm gonna go ahead and separate these out as well. Let's see, tap, 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 tap. I know there's another layer on there. How confident there is, but maybe not. Let's see. The other thing Miss Tracy does is she will take a straight pin sometimes and pull with a straight pin, but you know what? That might be the only layer, you guys. Okay, well, let's give it a shot. So I really just want these berries and the holly leaves. Don't want the burgundy background. You know, these would make such good gifts for cousins and aunts and uncles, brothers, sisters. You know, we all have so much stuff that it's kind of nice to give something sometime that has meaning, you know. That has a deeper meaning, I guess I should say. stick my tongue out when I make stuff <laughs> which isn't a big deal unless I'm on camera <laughs> and then it's really noticeable okay. all right so there's my holly got one little set of holly that could go up there Really, it could come off the edge. I kind of like that up there. Put some Mod Podge down for that. And I see here where my little mitten is coming up I'm going to put a little underneath there and it's already started to dry a little so now I'm going to pounce it with the Mod Podge if I don't do that the resin will um, get on that napkin when I pour resin on it in a few minutes and it will make it um, this color it'll make it darker than it actually is so just pounce pounce pouncing you kind of want to wait till it's dry a little bit before you pounce over the top of it okay now I'm going to do some more holly, another piece of holly. Let's see, here it is. Separate it. And that really was down to, that just had two plies. Um, I thought it looked like it was more than, more than one, but, or more than two, but I guess it wasn't. Sometimes this is easier said than done. There we and sometimes they just fall apart. <laughs> it's very strange. Okay. And like I said, if you have a lighter background, you really don't have to fussy cut um, around the edge. You really, it just kind of melts into the white. Now, I could certainly have painted the background burgundy, but um, then I don't think my words would have shown up on my recipe. The recipe is actually a sheet in a notebook. My grandmother was, um, you know, a child of the Depression, and she wrote a lot of places in her recipe book how much each recipe cost. You know, mushrooms, 38 cents. <laughs> um, you know, chicken, whatever, like how much each thing cost when she bought it. Which I think is really cool to have. She was very frugal with things like that and knew how to stretch her dollar as most children of the Depression did. So it's pretty impressive, honestly. Okay, I think I'll do some there. Maybe, oh, can't 
believe I was able to move that. I've tried before. Usually they stick. Tap, tap, tap. Is that one dry yet? Yep, that one's dry enough to tap over it. And if it's hanging off the edge, I'm just going to let it hang off. And then I'll show you what I'm going to do when I come back around. Let me make sure this is still hanging off and not stuck down. Okay. I'll show you how I'm going to handle that in a few minutes. All right, one more up here in this corner, and then I think we'll be all set. Are y'all bored yet? <laughs> I hope not. Oh, I forgot to separate it. And yes, I'm licking my fingers with paint on my hands. Don't tell my mom. I'm sure it's non toxic. There's one little leaf. And then I'm going to have this little cluster here. Think of all the different things you could do with these napkins. There are so many beautiful napkin designs out there. Um, so many napkin designs. I actually have kits. We don't use napkins in the kits, but it's glass and resin. And um, you can make Christmas ornaments. You can make a board with a church on it. I have all different kinds of kits that I sell on my website. So. When you leave here, you can go check that out if you'd like. Also teach classes online and I have a membership group. Okay, kind of like extra leaves over here. Did I already separate those? I did not. I wish this video was live. You all could keep me in line. <laughs> Remind me. I need to do. Make sure. I already checked it, but okay. That one's okay. I kind of want to layer this together. I think that that would be kind of pretty. So I think I'll cut one more out if y'all are patient with me. My cousin's going to love this. So she's getting married in March. We've been working on making a family cookbook for her and her new husband. For she and her new husband. For her new husband and her. Where's my creamer? <laughs> Correct myself. Okay. And then I think I'm going to put glass on the leaves and on the berries. I have some um, sparkly things for berries that I think would be super cute and kind of keeping with this theme. That's part of why I really loved this um, little Santa on here because he, um, I separate this one. <laughs> See, I almost forgot again. This little Santa reminds me of the 1940s, which was my grandmother's um, childhood, you know. This is kind of a World War II style Santa Claus down here, I think. Okay. Retro, very retro. I'm just going to put a whole bunch on here and then figure out how I want these to lay. think I like this. Maybe that and that. Mm. An extra little leaf. That's what I like. So here. Watch 
under there. It really doesn't take much Mod Podge at all to hold this tissue paper down. And I'll put one more right in here. Doesn't look very good though right there. Maybe like this. Okay. Go over that one. Let's see, is it stuck? Yeah, I think I can go over that one. Now that I've got my napkins all in place where I want them, I'm going to move my attention to glass. I'm going to go ahead and dry this with my dryer a little bit, my heat tool, just to get it um, so that I can place glass on it right away. enough for me to start placing my glass. Let me um, start with some of these leaves. Now this is a wine bottle um, that I peeled the label off and cleaned and started cutting. Um, I use all kinds of glass. This is from a vase. This isn't from this, this, this piece is from a vase. I use all kinds of glass for my glass art. Today I'm going to be using the glass from this wine bottle and maybe some of this gold glass from a um, votive candle that came from the Dollar Tree and then I also have these glittery little styrofoam balls and I'm going to use those as well so these are nippers and I take the nippers and um, nip the glass in the shape that um, that I want to use for this detail here and I'm kind of giving it some pointy edges to follow along with the pointy edge of the holly. And I'm just gonna place the glass down on top of the napkin there where um, the holly is. So the napkin will still show through from underneath it, but um, it'll be covered up a little bit. And then I can also add holly, add glass where there is no napkin underneath it, just to kind of add a little more dimension. So I may do that up in here. So I can cover up the napkin or not cover up the napkin, doesn't really matter. It just gives it more interest the more you do different things, if that makes sense to you. these pieces to kind of fit over actually I think I'll use this one over here it's a better fit and you can vary the shade you can vary the texture there we go you see what I'm doing with this See where this is going? Put a little tiny piece in here. I love adding dimension and, and color shifts and um, interesting design with glass. These two greens are slightly different in color too, so that, that adds to the uniqueness and the depth of color as well. Maybe that. Just trying to match up the shape somewhat. Again, it doesn't have to be exact. Let's see, here we go. Kind of like that offset a little bit. Maybe I'll use one of these little chips up here. I 
fill in these spaces just a little bit. Kind of hard to see when I'm down below and not right on top of it. I usually stand up when I work except when I do videos. <laughs> Now these are, like, like I said, these are called glass snippers. I think I said that. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So um, if you need um, any of these supplies, I do have them in my Amazon affiliate store. Um, you can also find glass snippers at Hobby Lobby. Some Michaels may carry them. I'm not sure. I know Hobby Lobby carries stained glass supplies art supply stores, um, places like that. There we go. All right, and one more little piece over here on the side. I don't want to cover up her handwriting where it says hubs. That's what she called my grandfather, hubby. Okay. All right. Then there's a little bit of Holly on his Santa hat here. I'm just going to use a couple of little pieces, scrap pieces that landed down here for that. Just like to add a little detail anywhere I can. That's kind of cute and it'll tie it in with this holly that's up here. Like I said, it doesn't have to be the exact shape because it'll just highlight it a little bit. is so unpredictable um, this is one of those things I couldn't really do ahead of time okay take my brush move this stuff out of the way so I don't lay my hand down in the glass any okay. um, next I want to use oh I never took this off let me show you what I would do to take that off I take a Can use your fingers to tear it or you can take a little sanding block and sand the the tissue away the napkin I keep calling it tissue because it's about the thickness of tissue paper once you separate the plies so you just sand that edge right there and the the napkin comes right off I think I got that set off all right, make sure everything's still in place. Stuff wiggles when I move stuff around, obviously. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna use some of these glitter styrofoam balls, because I think these are really fun and kind of funky and kitschy. Um, they go with this look of the 1940s um, Santa. I have a whole bag of them here, actually. Let's kind of dump these out and see. I want to use these bigger ones. Some of them are small. Some of them are bigger. This may seem tedious, but you guys, this is the devil's in the details. <laughs> and so is the angel. I love the details on these pieces. So, And nothing is permanent until you pour resin on it. So, you can move stuff around. I mean, I guess the, the decoupaged stuff is kind of permanent, but nothing's like super permanent until the resin's on it. I may need to glue these in place. I'm going to get a dot of glue here because they're going to roll around when the resin hits them, and I don't want that. I'm just going to kind of use some clear. This is clear Elmer's glue. I'm going to use some clear Elmer's glue to kind of hold them in place here. Just so they don't roll around on me. Now, the most important thing to remember about this is that everything, your glue, your paint, your Mod Podge, everything has to be dry before you pour resin. Has to be dry. I'm going to put 
put this tiny, tiny, these tiny dots over here. But the smallest, no, here the smallest. Oh goodness, these get really small in this package. This one's not even. Oh, that's sweet. I hope you all can see this okay. It's zoomed in enough. I have some ladies in my group that um, watch me on their television. They put YouTube or put my Facebook live on their television. So <laughs> that's a way to do it if you if it's so small you can't see. But I hope that you can at least get the idea of it. And if you're interested in more, you can always send me a message and I will be happy to answer any questions. Still piling up these red berries. Just love the sparkle they give. And then I might put some gold in here as well. Some gold glass. I have some little pieces right here. Goodness, can't get them out of there. Kind of like this. Pop of gold. Can you even see that on there? I don't know if you can see it on the screen or not. This long triangle shape is really my favorite to use for this kind of stuff because it you can use it in a variety of ways. Okay, I like the way this is coming together. Okay, and we're going to make sure that that's dry. And when it's dry, I'm going to set it up on these little cups here. The cups will allow, um, I use and reuse these cups all the time. The cups will allow for the resin to drain down onto the table underneath and um, make sure that it's in a thin, even layer. Move all this stuff out of my way ready to pour resin. Again, the most important thing is that all of this is dry before you pour resin on it, okay? Okay, it's time to resin. I'm gonna put on some gloves. You don't want the resin to touch your hands. It's not toxic, but uh, in repeated exposure to resin can cause a skin allergy, so I'm very careful about that. So I use it a lot. I'm gonna use these measuring cups to measure out 50% of one kind and 50% of the other kind. So this is Art Resin. It's a product that I use. Um, you can get it in little smaller bottles. Um, I buy it in really large uh, containers and then put it in these. So this is this is a smaller amount than what I purchase it in. But I only need about three ounces. So I'm going to measure out one and a half ounces. And like I said, this is has measures on the side of it so probably don't even need three ounces honestly this is kind of small and it doesn't have a lot of glass on it and then this is the other part of it which is the hardener and then I'm gonna stir it for three minutes okay Three minutes without stopping. Stir it slowly and gently so that I don't mix too many bubbles into my mixture here. I want to keep it um, as bubble free as possible. You also want to make sure you do this in a place where you can leave it to dry for 24 hours um, undisturbed. Um, it'll be dry after 12 hours, but it'll be at least 24 before it's cured. And you want it to be in a room temperature area. So 
not in a cold or hot garage um, or a cold or hot basement or attic. Just room temperature is what you need to do. Once your three minute timer has gone off, you can go ahead and take your resin and your star stick and drizzle over the top of your glass piece. Again, you wanna make sure that it's completely dry and you wanna make sure it's elevated onto cups and you've got plastic underneath so that when the resin drips down, it will cover your workspace. And then uh, you wanna make sure that you've got it in a place where you can leave it undisturbed for a little while about 12 to 24 hours, okay? So I'm just gonna drizzle, using my star stick, drizzle the resin onto my artwork. Resin makes everything brighter and shiny, it's sparkly. It's just my favorite thing ever. Pretty passionate about it. going to meld all of these things together and really make them look like one cohesive thing. And I don't worry about the drips on the back. You can always pop those off with a uh, X-Acto knife or if you um, wait till it's really cured like three days you could sand them down with an with a palm sander, orbital sander. Um, if you're worried about the drips on the back, you could always tape the back of your piece before doing this and then um, I'm gonna use my gloved finger and then you can just peel the tape off and the drips will come with it. Use my gloved finger to kind of spread everything out and make sure my sides have resin on them because I probably won't be framing this piece. Although I could make a little frame for it. We do that a lot. But I really just want to make sure that the resin covers the sides. Because so I think this will be cute on a little easel in her kitchen. She's using some resin from the top to, to do that. Because there is plenty on there. Okay. You can probably see bubbles on there too, which is just fine. We're going to use a little butane torch to get the bubbles out. Make sure that all that's covered. And the resin's soaking in on this raw wood and that's just fine, that's on the sides, okay. So now I'm gonna use my torch. This is just a little butane torch that I use to pop these bubbles. You don't wanna hold it in one spot, move quickly. I'm probably about six inches from your, um, from your piece, but it popped all those bubbles and now you can see it's very clear. Let's see, I don't wanna tilt it, but it is crystal clear on there. Now I'm gonna leave this to dry for about 12 to 24 hours, and when I come back, I'll put a hanger on the back of it, or I can gift it with a little um, easel, and it'll be a perfect little reminder of the oyster crackers that we grew up loving at Christmas time. Thank you all so much for joining me, and again, if you have any questions, um, just send me a message. You can reach me on Facebook, Instagram, or on my website. Thank you so much. Have a great day.